guys, this is Red Baron FPV, and uh, I just got this new mini core, actually micro quad frame in. It's a Diatome 150 millimeter frame from Banggood. And uh, when I got it in, I figured I'd do a little uh, review and assembly video and uh, and let you guys take a look. So anyway, here is how it comes in this uh, black bag. And uh, I'll pull it out, and it comes wrapped in this foam. So let's go ahead and open it up. And wow, this thing is small. It's just amazing how small this entire frame is. Um, put the label in view here. It shows it's a Blade 150 glass fiber frame. And this actually has a power distribution board in it, which is amazing for such a small uh, quad. Um, it is made by Diatone. And um, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. Let's pour this out here, and I'll set this aside. So here is the power distribution board. Um, this would be the top, and actually the DTI indicates the front of the quad. It's got pads for each of the speed controllers to, to solder directly to the board, as well as your main power lead that shows uh, 1S through 3S, so it can handle those voltages. Um, on the bottom, it uh, allows you to solder on uh, LED lights, which is pretty cool. Um, the newer versions of this frame apparently uh, come with what they call an LED decoration board, uh, but it's three LEDs that you can solder on a board. Uh, you can solder directly to this power distribution board. So let's set that over here. And then uh, this is the top plate of the frame. And then it comes with uh, a couple bags, well actually a few bags. Um, this appears to be the arms. So let's go ahead and open this one up. And let's pour these out. So these arms are, um, it's crazy just how small they are. Um, they're, they appear to be quite thick though and they do have four holes, which is good. I think earlier versions of this frame uh, only had three, so this could support like a 1306 motor. So let's set these out. And then um, these are some standoffs. Looks like uh, four, actually five, so maybe they give us an extra one. And these are threaded standoffs. I'll let to hold this a little closer. And we don't need that. Let's see. So it comes with some nuts as well. Let's go ahead and open those. All right. And all the screws. All right. And then lastly, it comes with a card that shows how the frame looks, the dimensions, estimation of weight, the dimensions of the bolt holes, and on the back it just shows diatone innovations. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this thing together and see how it comes out. All right, well, the first thing we need to do is take the power distribution board, which is the bottom of the, the quad, and we need to attach the arms. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. If you look at the, the card here, it shows the legs actually on top of the distribution board. But the thing is, is looking at that, it just it seems to be in the way of where your electronics are going to go, because most likely they're going to be internally inside this frame. So you can really do it two different ways. Um, you can do it like they recommend, like this, where the legs are on top, such as this. But I think I'm going to put mine on the bottom. I think it'll make it a much cleaner uh, internal area for electronics, and I think it would work out a lot better. So that's what I'm going to do here. So the first thing we do is um, take our get our tools together here. I've got a pair of needle nose pliers. A small Phillips head screwdriver and 
most important thing is Loctite. Now, for this video, I'm not going to do it using any Loctite just because uh, I'm just putting the frame together to show you guys, but every single screw should have this on it for your final build, so that way you don't have to worry about any, uh, any screws working themselves loose. And all you do is just take a dab and put it at the end of the screw and then screw it in and those screws will stay solid and snug and you don't have to worry about anything coming loose in flight which would be really really bad um, so anyway let's go ahead and put this thing together so the first thing we need to do is get the arms in the correct orientations um, I have noticed uh, some of these arms are uh, slightly discolored um, but all of these are good I had actually built another one and one of them was discolored like see that one so you may want to make sure, I don't know if you can see that, it's got a little smudges, it's just not perfect, it's not bad, it's just not perfect. So I would like this to be the top. So I would recommend that you go through them and make sure that you can orientate all of them. Let me move some stuff out of my way here. But you can orientate all of them so that they uh, have the pretty side up. Um, they're effectively the same on both sides, but I like to make sure you know, the pretty side on the top is, is, is there. So. Anyway, I'm going to grab one of these screws and magnetic screwdrivers. Oh, I guess this one's not magnetic, but they do help. So I'll take one screw, get my power distribution board, and I'm going to put this under, and I'm just going to stick it through this outer hole and through the power distribution board. So you can see I've got a little bit sticking out, and then the easiest thing to do, you put your uh, Loctite on a tip and then just screw this standoff into it okay so that would be the first one and then you just do the same thing on the rest so we'll go ahead and just do that now so I'll grab another screw and put an arm on it and put it in the outer hole there and then through the power distribution board okay and then take another standoff and just screw it on there you don't need to put it very tight yet because you've got to adjust them to get the inner screws into there so spin it around just do the same thing on this one as well Right. And grab another standoff, screw it on there. I gotta have that one a little bit crooked here. There we go. All right, one left to go. So we'll just stick that in and we'll do it a little differently on this one. Just hold it with your finger, stick it through this hole, hold it with your finger, and just screw a standoff with your fingers on like that. So that's roughly how you want it. You want to get it kind of where they want to be, just tight enough to hold it for now then there are a couple ways you can do that and do this part now again according to their diagram they actually show the screws going up through the bottom and nuts being on top but i like it very smooth on the top i like smooth internal for my electronics so i'm actually going to do it the opposite direction i'm going to do them down i think it'll give a nice cleaner internal area um, for uh for my electronics and I think I'll like it a lot better just having that button head there versus a big nut sticking up. So again, a little bit of Loctite and just take your nuts and uh, tighten those up. I'll just hand tighten them and I'll go back and, and tighten each one with uh, the pair of pliers and the screwdriver, but this is enough for now. So just repeat on the inner ones, you have four inner holes and just push it through the power distribution board and the leg and then take the nut and just tighten that down. So you'll just do the same on the other side. All right. There's 
one one more to go and you just need to line the leg so that it'll go through the hole and tighten that down all right looks like one of my standoffs popped off but that's okay and just put it back on now that you have all of them on, um, I like to keep it loose uh, until I get ready for the final, but the inter internal ones need to be tightened now. So probably the easiest thing to do is just take a pair of pliers and hold the nut like that and take your screwdriver and just tighten it. You don't need to over tighten it. You don't want to go crazy on it. Just enough where two fingers tightens it down. And if you have your Loctite on there, it'll hold nice and snug. So just flip it over and do the same thing again here. All right, and one more. All right. So now I've tightened the inner, uh, all of the inner ones. I've left the, the out, outer ones loose for now, just to ensure that I can get the top plate on without any issues. So let's go ahead and get the top plate on now. So um, this is the same in, in both directions. It's there's no difference between the top and the bottom. It's just you know just putting it on there, and you can see there's four holes to align that. Um, assuming that you've already got your electronics and everything in there, it's ready to go. Again, you want to lock tight each of these when you put it in there. So I'll just take a screw. It's a little easier just to stick it through the hole first. And then all you're going to do is just stick it in the standoff. And I don't fully tighten them down yet until I get all of them aligned. So I leave a little bit of little bit of thread sticking out just to ensure that I can get all four aligned correctly before I start tightening and wrenching it down and then let's just stick another one in all right and then we'll do the other two And as you can see, it's good to keep it slightly loose until you get them all in there, just to make sure everything aligns first. All right, so one more to go. Sometimes they can be a little challenging to get through both holes. And these screws are so small. It's uh it's nuts how how small everything is, but it is a pretty cool frame. All right, so now that I've got all four started, I can go ahead and tighten all of them down. And we are almost done building this frame. Now remember, I didn't do the bottom ones yet, so it's good to make sure and go tighten those up as well. All right check on each just to make sure they're good and snug again don't overdo it just enough to be tight with two fingers all right and there is a completed diatone 150 millimeter frame um, what's cool is they do provide you with some extra parts. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple screws, a nut, and an extra standoff, which is nice. They include it. Um, as I've overlooked, as I've looked over this this frame, I have to say it's 
it's a pretty impressive frame. It's well thought out. I've looked through a, a, a number of different angles, and uh, they really left a lot of uh, options for, for the end user. Um, one thing you could do if you mounted your speed controllers on the arms, you could run your wires through here and under here. Now, granted, some people don't like running wires through holes like this because it can cause a point for a break or wire break because the frame might cut it. However, um, it sure would make a tidy frame to be able to run wires through these holes and up through here. Uh, granted, your wires will be exposed. You may prefer them on top. It's just a matter of preference. Or you can separate your power from your servo leads to your uh, flight controller. What's also very cool about this frame is if you notice these four holes, um, you can actually fit a full-size flight controller on this, uh, this uh, frame, which is incredible. Actually, I've got one right here that I've uh, kind of been playing around with. Um, I need to take these pins off because I'm probably just gonna hard solder all of those uh, servo leads directly to the board just to cut down on weight. But pretty amazing that, a, that a, that's a full-size naze, acro naze that fits. And I just uh, took some uh, M3 nylon bolts and some uh, uh, spacers and just lifted it off the uh, frame a little bit because um, you know I just wanna make sure I don't have any issues with conductivity plus with the spacers, I got a little bit of gap under the flight controller so I can run some wiring under there or whatever I'd like to do. Um, other really cool things I noticed about the frame, uh, if you run uh, a video system, uh, a lot of people are doing these micro builds, these micro FPV builds. You can certainly mount your camera, but what's cool is you can put your transmitter and hypothetically you can use one of these holes to run your antenna up through, um, which is pretty neat. So you've got an option there. Um, also with this bar and hole, um, I'm thinking you could use that to run Velcro to hold a battery. Uh, I think on mine, I'm going to put the battery on the bottom instead of on the top because the top I'm going to have an antenna and uh, possibly uh, a micro HD camera or something like that. So uh, I think it might balance better and I'm probably going to end up running like around a thousand milliamp, uh, 800 to a thousand milliamp 3S battery on this, uh, probably with 1306 motors, but haven't decided that yet. Um, you could fly this on 2S with no problem, but I mean, gosh, look at the size of that thing. It's just awesome. 150 millimeter frame. I've been dying to uh, see one coming on the market, but most importantly, one with the power distribution board, which is just really cool because uh, without all the additional wiring, it sure does cut down on a lot, um, a lot of weight. So that's, that's pretty nice. Um, other things I noticed, uh, it's got these holes back here. It's got two holes on either side of the flight controller and then two holes in the front. Um, not certain what those are for, but my guess is that this would be for zip ties. So you could do a zip tie to hold down your plug. You could do another zip tie for your camera or a zip tie for anything in the middle um, as well. So that's pretty cool. They, they've offered a lot of options that are there if you'd like to use them on the board. Um, well, one last thing I wanted to do for you guys is go ahead and do some measurements. So let's go ahead and measure this out. All right, the arms look like 2.08, 2.08 millimeters. Um, the upper plate looks like 0.87, so roughly one millimeter. And then the power distribution board is coming in about 1.56. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful for you, for you guys, and I'll have a flight video here uh, very, very soon. Thanks again. Bye.